There is no greater and better proof or symptom of a large object coming close to our solar system than the appearance of things that never used to be part of our solar system. Being a rather sparse and almost vacuum-like background, all of a sudden we started seeing a glow of ultraviolet and glows of x-rays especially throughout the background and major portions of the sky. And comets. Comets started coming in and out of our solar system in record numbers. We would go 30 years before we could see a comet with the naked eye and all of a sudden in just a matter of two years there were several. But the fireballs are extremely indicative of something having disturbed the asteroid belt. Many of the fireballs, called bolides, NASA has confirmed, have come from the asteroid belt. So what creates and can take an asteroid from the asteroid belt and suddenly sling it towards the sun? These And these fireballs, they're not just any fireballs. They break the sound barrier. They rattle your windows. Whoever thought a meteor would rattle your windows? Well, thousands and thousands and thousands of people have experienced such since about 2010. And when you go to amsmeteors.com, you can look at the fireball counts. And when you do so, I'm, I'm not going to bore you with the numbers and, and columns, but you will see that the number of sightings, not overall, but just for individual fireballs, the numbers are increasing, meaning more and more people across more and more time zones are seeing the same objects. And when you see that increasing each and every year, more and more people, bigger sightings, mass sightings, that's hinting that these objects are becoming bigger. And the overall number of reported fireballs that break the sound barrier, the overall number has seemed to level off slightly. But what's not leveling off is the apparent size of each and every fireball that's being reported. It is it is really eye-opening when you go back through the fireball logs and you skim through them and you see one report here, one report there, one report here, one report there, two, three, four reports of something breaking the sound barrier. And then you get up to 60, 70, 80, 100, 180. I mean, 200 people uh, reporting these fireballs, the same fireball. Uh, that tells you that these fireballs are bigger and they're traveling and spanning a much greater distance. One thing that I have learned after watching all of these fireballs is an understanding of just how well our atmosphere has protected us. And some people claim that some of these have been shot down through advanced technologies. And there is some subjective video evidence showing this. But it's a solar system event. It's not an Earth event. And in fact... Large impacts have been even recorded on Jupiter and on the moon. And we think this large impact wobbled the moon. And, and it's, it's quite obvious that something has been slinging asteroids our way. They were predominant, they, they would call... February fireball season, but basically the February fireballs extended in, into March and April, 
And if you look at the counts, especially in the earlier years, you can see March, April, May were still heavy in fireballs. And approaching February, January, even November, December, we're seeing some very large fireball numbers. While in June, for at least a while, the numbers seem to fall off on asteroids or fireballs that break the sound barrier. And, and there's nothing you can do about them except enjoy the light show and understand that maybe one of these impacts will put enough dust into the air that will block out some of the solar radiation that we're getting. Then we won't have to spray manually <laughs> particulates into the atmosphere. And, and many, many people will try to avoid the conversation of what causes them to all of a sudden be here. Many people will avoid that conversation because there's very few other explanations. They could say that the entire solar system, the, every 100,000 years, makes a complete orbital cycle around the center of the solar system as our sun is in orbit around the center of our solar system or our galaxy um, it, and it's really more accurate to say the sun revolves around the center of our galaxy and every hundred thousand or whatever hundred fifty thousand years we complete a revolution and that we're just going through a debris field. Well, you know, that debris doesn't stay stationary. And the sun is always trying to maintain a grip and draw these things into the sun. However, those with momentum can stay and resist the sun's gravity. That means they have to be in orbit. So, when the sun makes a complete revolution around, let's say, the center of our galaxy. It clears a path. Just like the moons in Saturn rings clear themselves a path. The path that Earth travels through and the Sun travels through a thousand times already, if not a million times already, should be relatively vacuumed clean. So the fact that you think we're somehow traveling through a debris field that was left here billions of years ago, um, that doesn't hold up to just logical progression of the solar system. And at stake is really an understanding of what's going on. And the fireballs are a symptom. And they're a symptom of the exact same thing, uh, that the radiation and the cosmic rays and the helium uh, counts. All of those are symptoms. The dimming of the stars, the dimming of certain constellations, the dimming and changing in color of certain planets, the changes in the atmospheres of all the planets, the changes in the atmospheres of all their moons is something that's been documented and it may not be widely shoved in your face but if you research it and look for it it will be there for you and and the fireballs that are coming in we're seeing some huge ones and if you don't think we know anything about fireballs just remember we've predicted impacts months in advance of february and why February? Well, February is on the opposite side of the sun where this brown dwarf resides 99% of the time. Directly opposite in February is, is planet Earth. So it makes perfect sense that the sun is focusing and drawing these things in. And, and it's... It's with very little trepidation that I report upon this. 
I, I think of, of an impact may be a saving grace. I do not believe in mega super tsunamis uh, created by something that's only 20 feet wide. Um, and most of these bolides are as large as a basketball, maybe as large as a Volkswagen. Something like that hitting the ocean will not, will not create a mega mega tsunami you can only displace as much water as your size indicates you can't displace more water than your physical size indicates but uh, so many of these uh, are so long lasting the numbers are so incredible that they're, they're being caught on film I mean, how hard is that to catch a meteor on, on film? But these are so long-lasting and so bright that they're showing up all over the world. And in 2008 and 2007, there were almost no reports of fireballs breaking the sound barrier. So now we're running 400 reports a year of fireballs breaking the sound barrier. And then there's reports of booms denied by Air Force. Booms, strange booms, occurring almost like periodically in the year uh, and on, on the calendar schedule. Uh, so what could be causing that? It's these things. It's fireballs. And the fact of the matter is, is they're proof. They're proof that if something large has moved across the asteroid belt first came the comets then the number of comets started dying down but then what started to increase was the asteroids showing up here coming from the asteroid belt so that tells you something crossed the Kuiper belt something crossed the asteroid belt and approached our solar system these are proof and until next time Stay prepared.